welcome back to the series. If you've been following along, um, we have done Aries through Virgo so far. And of course, up next, we have the air sign of Libra. So we are at the halfway point in the zodiac lifespan. Um, if you ever look at the circle that has all the signs going around it, um, you'll find Libra is starts the seventh house which is directly opposite the first house or where your rising sign would sit. Um, and so it's very, very important in a lot of ways. Uh, Libra energy and seventh house energy serves as what's called your descendant. And so it's oppositional energy from what you are used to going about things because your rising sign is kind of how you approach situations. Um, like the lens that you view things through um, and how you can like kind of appear to people you know in conversation um, it's very mind oriented you know it's represented by Aries typically where it's sitting and Aries represents the forehead and so there is some um, it's just not like heavily intellectual in nature like Mercury would be it's more about your head is like getting things started is like how do you approach something because this is the top of your body um, so it's like how do you go about starting things and so that's really your approach to everything can be found in your rising sign and um, there's a lot of misconceptions as to like how important it actually is and I can tell you it is significant it is extremely important in your chart um, because not only does it involve how you go about things um, and maybe your social mask in some sense um, it puts all of your houses into alignment and so without it you like there would be no structure to your chart and so it's impossible um, to not utilize and uh, basically it's like your life takes the life of whatever your rising sign is because those are the houses that you move through and those are the natural signs that are attached to it. So for instance, mine is a Gemini rising. And so I start with Gemini in the first, second is Cancer, Leo in the third, fourth is Virgo, and it goes on and on through that. And so that gives me a very, very Gemini way of approaching life and perceiving things. Um, and so without that kind of basis or understanding, it would be a lot harder for me to navigate with just a sun and a moon sign. Um, so that's kind of the importance of it. But definitely, if you don't already know yours, go and find it out. There's a lot of free websites out there that um, you can just plug in your birth info and find out your rising sign. Um, I don't know why I spent so much time talking about my rising sign, because this is a video for Libra, uh, but this is the Descendant. So the Descendant is energy that is opposite your own. Um, it is what is not natural to you, but it is what you attract. So just like a lover, you attract lovers, but oftentimes lovers represent things that are very polar opposite your own personality because through love we have a union that is to supposed to promote um, growth and supposed to kind of like create balance and so and sometimes in your life you will experience people coming into your life or frequently obviously not just in a love sense but people coming into your life to uh, restore balance to your life because you are so far maybe on one side of things um, and it takes another person to kind of open up your perspective when you're maybe a little too rigid or, or a little too earth natured or a little too um, fire headed, you know, like one of those elements. And you can almost guarantee that the people that are around you are going to have um, signs that are diametrically opposite your own. So, you know, for Aries, you're going to have Libras, Taurus, you're going to have Scorpio, Gemini, Sagittarius, and so on, um, because there's a natural attraction there. And so that's kind of what we look at when we look at Libra. Um, it's not the easiest sign to understand because it is away from the self. It is um, not really about the self at all. It's about everything else. Um, and that's why it's called your descendant, because it's not really so much what you're working on, it's what is coming into your life to help you. And so it's not necessarily your focus. 
I mean, yes, a lot of people um, could be searching for love. That's a focus in some way. Um, but, you know, we're all individuals, especially on this earth. We have jobs and roles that we're trying to fulfill. And love isn't necessarily a role that we can study up on and um, learn how to how to do. Surely there are rom-coms out there that would like to tell you differently, um, but I don't think that any of those methods are, are very realistic or proven in the real world. So um, that Libra energy is, you know, is complex in nature, um, but it's more about the reflective side of things. So let me start pulling some cards before I just keep going here. So Libra energy, we expect to see... Um, Obviously, Justice is the major arcana card for Libra um, that implies that there is some government or legal um, implication to the sign. So there's a natural association to law and the study of law um, with Libra signs, if, if you are one of them. You probably have a knack for that or just debate in general. Um, I always think of like one of the titular Libra characters is um, Cher from Clueless, and she uh, she like in one of the very first scenes you can see her in debate class, and she does it very well. It's like maybe not the most thought provoking counter arguments, but they do make sense and they do resonate with the other people, which is kind of what debate is all about. It's not necessarily about making like the biggest. Um, you know, insights that are going to kind of change their perceptions of people, but it's more so about like winning for argument's sake, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of like the mind of a lawyer. It's not necessarily driven by morals and, you know, in that sense, and that there's a right and a wrong, clearly. It's more about um, almost like winning to some degree. <laughs> so it can kind of feel like cutthroat. Um, I do know one Libra who does work in a legal field and yeah they're uh, I wouldn't want to come up against them in any kind of um, situation like that <laughs> okay oh interesting okay so first card um, you know this is there's a lot of symbolism in here that we can associate to, uh, to Libra not necessarily the first expected card I think a lot of people seeing the two up there um, and just the two swords and everything, it's very Gemini. Um, and the yellow and blue are often colors associated with that sign as well. But the Libra aspects of this really um, kind of showcase the choice or the balance. You know, I feel like this person is kind of hanging in some sort of decision limbo, waiting for a sign of some kind or waiting for the scales to tip uh, one direction or the other. And so they have kind of sequestered themselves. They've put themselves on this bench. You know, it's very much like, you know, in a trial, um, I forget what term people use bench for, but there's like a bench, is it jury maybe? Um, but that's kind of what it feels like, and it's like you're waiting, you're in the waiting process while the deliberation is going on behind the scenes. It's like you don't necessarily um, know or are making the decision, like you're not an active voice in the decision process with this card. It's more so um, maybe you're depending on someone else. Um, or you are just really, really taking a very long time to decide. And we see all those things with Libras. Um, they're really not comfortable with making decisions quickly or on the spot. Um, they do like to take their times. I think there's a lot of stereotypes out there for if you want a quick decision, don't ask a Libra. I mean, something as simple as like, where do you want to go eat? You know, could be a really difficult challenge for them to take on. Um, just because they kind of have those perfectionist tendencies coming from Virgo, the sign before them. And I think they get actually a little more pronounced, if I might be honest about that. I think Libras actually seek perfection a little farther. They just have that Venus energy that allows them to kind of look almost like there's an effortlessness to them. But the closer and more you get to know a Libra, you find out that there is quite a lot of thought and 
Um, they do hold themselves to a very high standard. Um, you just don't think of that necessarily looking at one because I feel like out of all the signs, they are very hard to study because they represent so much away from the self. And so it's almost like you can't look at them through a viewpoint of like any other person, you know, just kind of like when you look at an Aquarius, you really don't know where to start, you know, cause they're just so different. Um, but uh, Libra is more so about that reflective kind of nature. Maybe we could link to Pisces. Um, we see a lot of that in common, um, but we'll talk more about that. So Two of Swords really is just the choice. It is the blue and the gray is kind of the most pronounced. And that also indicates uh, blue is like wishes, but it's also, I feel like sadness. Sadness is very easy to associate with blue. And so naturally decisions for this sign make them feel some sort of way and it's not always a good way and um, they have to go to the bench look how solid and um, tough that foundation is and so I think there is a natural inclination to stick to what they know because we see that that foundation that they're resting on um, that makes me think that they're not going to go in the unexpected direction even though they are air signs, they are cardinal first and foremost, and cardinal signs are linked to our past. They're linked to um, foundation, tradition, anything that is kind of like the social norm. I feel like the cardinal signs have um, a tendency to latch onto or they kind of represent. So we find more so Libra, yes, they have the air sign that's pushing the boundaries, but they're doing so at a much slower pace than a Gemini or an Aquarius. They're doing it in a way that is still valuing tradition. Um, and they're also doing it in a way that they aren't having to make the decision. So naturally, even though they do have the insights to maybe push for change and stuff, they don't feel comfortable in that role. And so that's why the role of a lawyer isn't the one that's making the decisions. It's the one that is relaying the information and structuring the conversation. Um, and just honestly, like just really good at kind of manipulating <laughs> to some degree because, um, you know, based on who you get as a client, uh, you could be on the wrong side of things, but yet that's your job. Your job is to defend that person and to win. Um, I don't know how being paid works as a lawyer, but I'm sure you don't get compensated as much if you don't win. Um, and so there's a lot of like maybe immoral things driving their search for honesty or truth. And so that's what makes it a very strange sign to kind of look at. And maybe you guys even have a hard time. Um, relating that to other people if you're a Libra watching this and you just feel like maybe people just don't know um, where I stand on situations or they have a hard time understanding my own truths and um, how I'm perceived and um, so there's a lot of confusion there um, I think for other people I think for you guys obviously you've spent so long in that skin that it becomes your second nature and you become a lot more comfortable with approaching life that way. But for maybe other people, um, I think it's like, how do they kind of approach or understand you guys? Um, and so this is just really a card that you feel like you need to like not even see. Like maybe if you see, it's gonna change your perception of things. And so it's like you've taken in the information and now you need to detach from the situation. You need to go off on your own and um, you know find your own way of doing it. And so maybe you feel very pressured when you're around other people and you have to make a decision of some kind. So you'd rather just tune out everything around you in order to do that. It seems like it's very hard to go about that. And, um, and it also looks like there's always two choices for you guys. So you run into two trains of thought and you're constantly like, well, which, you know, which way am I going with this? And so maybe with a Gemini that I think would be a lot more capable with this card, playing devil's advocate or just going down each path and finding a way back and to making a choice, um, you guys like feel more tied to whatever path that you choose. 
with that cardinal energy, it's like when you make a choice, you're kind of like setting a standard or a foundation. And so you feel like some sort of need to see it through um, because cardinal is so action oriented. And so it's not like a Gemini where maybe they talk about a subject, but they don't follow that, you know, years down the road. Um, they're not going to hold themselves to that first decision or train of thought. You know, they're just doing it in an explorative capacity. And so maybe it would help you guys to think of things in that way and that you don't have to commit to every conversation or every decision that you have. Um, it's really just about finding more insight and answers and maybe opinions along the way. So I think that could be some good advice to not make it feel so weighty. Um, because even that card doesn't really show that like these decisions are that serious. Yes, we have that legal emphasis with Libra, but um, it's not judgment. It's not like the justice card even. Um, it's a little less serious. It's at the beginning of a sword suit, so it's pretty low on the totem pole. Um, not to like belittle that, but you know. And so let's see what else Libra. Okay. Oh, okay, so we go from a two to a three. So this is a good one. Um, I, I, I'm not sure, I guess I'll, I'll talk about this because I do know a lot of Libras personally um, and a lot of people with Libra in their charts. So I feel like I do have that foundation. A Leo naturally attracts them because they're in, um, for a Libra, they're, a Leo is in the 11th house of friendship. Um, and so you get a lot of those kind of in your life. Um, and I've, I've had the, the fortune of, you know, having so many beautiful people and beautiful thinkers, um, you know, in my life. But Three of Swords here is interesting because it's the next card in the same suit. It's, it's literally the next card in the tarot from the Two of Swords. And so we take a transition from um, not really feeling... Like we can make the decision to, to making it even worse. Um, you know, this really feels like we don't know uh, what's right for ourselves um, and, you know, kind of how to push past our fears um, and our defeat from the past. You know, this is like the one card in the sword suit that really speaks to the past of an air sign. Um, because it's the heart and the heart is with you at all times and the swords are like your past uh, defeats and so you guys really have a hard time um, moving through uh, your past lovers and letting go of a lot of that stuff and it may not even be love in a capacity but it just be people that you're very fond of um, maybe you have a tendency to look the other way or to give them the benefit of the doubt possibly when they don't even deserve it um, I feel like that's a running theme for Libras is that you guys are so forgiving and that you're almost doing yourself a discredit in the process um, and because you just don't want to kind of like fan the flame or you don't want to um, create any kind of discord. So you have a tendency of not letting go of things um, and they just kind of following you and imposing on your future. And maybe that's a little deeper read than what this card is, but that's just what it really speaks to me from knowing Libra so personally. Um, because I'm, I, I'm just like, they're an air sign, but they're so not at the same time. They're, you know, it's just so frustrating. Um, sometimes I wish that they would just go in the direction that like an Aquarius or a Gemini would and just not, you know, be so hard on themselves. Um, not that those signs can't be, but I think Libras, they really, really do just try to seek perfection and perfection for them means that leaving like nobody behind, you know, it's to like making every situation somehow work even past it being, um, kind of like, um, salvageable, you know? And so that can lead to a lot of heartache that can lead to like a lot of pain, um, if somebody, you know, that you just can't let go of has a way of pushing your buttons or holding things over you, um, you know, it's, it's almost like to some degree you're asking for it. Um, if you can't just find a way around that and letting go of somebody that's just really not healthy for you. 
Um, and so with Libras, we have in the fourth house, if you look at a Libra rising, um, the fourth house has Capricorn in it. And Capricorn is all about the past. Um, you know, it's about like more of harder energy to move through. Um, and Libras are kind of stuck with that, unfortunately, with the cardinal nature um, that they, it kind of keeps them from fully going in that air direction where they can just kind of flow into whatever, um, you know, they, maybe if we look at it like it's a, maybe it's a current of wind that if you are the wind, you're a Libra, you're the wind itself, but you can't help but pick up pages of your journal with you. Like they constantly just keep flowing into your gust or, um, you know, there's an article of clothing that just keeps like getting twirled back into it. And so there's all these reminders of your past and that um, it seems like wherever you go, wherever you try to make a, a new start or something, you bring that with you or you find yourself going to that place to where you're thinking heavily on those past failures or um, just situations and they keep imposing on your present self. Um, I interrupted my train of thought with a different one, and now I don't really remember what the other one was. I felt like it was important, though. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back. So the Three of Swords is also um, the only card in the tarot to feature a heart. And so that's really significant, because, um, especially because we don't necessarily think that swords are associated to the heart. They are more so... Um, associated to the people in your life. Swords, usually if you get a high amount of swords, it means that there are a lot of relationships in your life, um, platonic or romantic, um, but that usually indicates more so that there are other people coming into your um, moments or your decisions and things, as opposed to if you're getting fire, it's really all about you. If you're getting water, it's more love-based. Um, and more of a romantic attachment, the air signs, there's still that kind of detached nature that they have. Um, Libra, I think, being the exception, but with the air signs, they're so far away from the self, you know? They're so far away from that kind of soul-driven ego identity um, that it's harder for them to kind of know who they are almost it's like if you ask an air sign like well like what do you think about yourself like what do you think you're good at or what do you how do you see yourself you know I feel like they would have the hardest time answering that um you know in this so this is an important card because it kind of breaks a little bit of barriers it has the heart with the swords um but it also does show the pain more so than the the romance um and libra is as ironic as it is are the indication of love and relationships in your chart but to an actual libra there is this tendency to um attach themselves to a partner that isn't um maybe if from a friend perspective you would say like the best for them, you know, um, that's a trend. And so there's almost this need to have some societal expectations fulfilled with that cardinal energy and just, you know, and the fact that they're an air sign that influences other people. And so if we're following society's expectations and we're combining the air element with that, then that just evokes like a natural, um, knack to find partners um and i just think that uh it's it's just not it's not fulfilling in nature and we see that with this card is that they'd almost be off better alone because whoever it is that they attract or um you know their stuff from their past just keeps imposing on them again and the rain is coming it's a very bleak card to get it's a very sad almost um kind of depressive looking card i mean there's just like nothing really to be positive about i feel like you know in any kind of sense when you get this card there's just an immediate dread that comes with it 
Um, but it's, you know, how painful is it to take out the swords? I think that that is where they really get stuck and that they see that um, there's so much attached to these relationships and these dynamics that they feel incapable of even tr attempting to remove it from their lives or to, to just go the other direction. And um, I think there's something to be said about like, you know, French cinema, because I feel like French people in France itself is very Libra oriented. Um, it's very much about enjoyment. It's like the city of love. It's beautiful. Fashion is huge there. Art, um, some of the biggest aspects of all that stuff. And it's just like such a serene place for everybody else. And that it just feels like such a good destination and like there's no violence there there's no corruption like there's nothing you would never think about going to france and like seeing homelessness or um you know just things of that nature like it, it's just kept up so well like it almost seemed perfect and um there's this thing because i love film so much and maybe you guys have seen any kind of french films new or old they always tend to end very bitter not even bittersweet they're just bitter and there is something to be said about that and it's like you really get attached to the story and everything and then you're like very hopeful for the character and everything and then all of a sudden it takes like this twist almost turn and you're just like what the fuck i was just being set up for like a really unhappy ending this whole time and um it was like not the direction at all you thought it was going and you're just like why did it do that i feel like a lot of times it destroys kind of the character arc um and that they just have a tendency to end things in like a really sour note and so maybe that's what you guys fear or you feel that you would do is that an ending to you just feels so broken and so um, bitter, you know, that you can't even like stomach the thought of one. I don't know. I can't look through the perspective of a Libra, but I, ca I can see the patterns in the Libras that I've known over the years. Um, and I just see that there is this weird irony that you guys represent love, but you have a hard time finding the right love for yourself that is, you know, inciting the balance. I feel like your lovers actually throw you off even more and it makes it even harder. Um, maybe that's because you have Aries in your seventh house and Aries is very hard to control. Aries is very aggressive and dominant. And so you feel like you're constantly, not suffocated, but you're constantly challenged by your partner and that it's very hard for you to relax. It's very hard for you to enjoy. Um, you know, and because there's just that aggressive energy and that childlike nature where you feel like you kind of have to take care of this person or do things for them. And so that speaks a lot to the Libra's adult or mature nature. Um, and maybe that's also why, too, is because adults, things get a lot more complicated when you're an adult. And, um, you know, you don't look through the lens of, is this right for me, yes or no, and make a decision on that. It's not as simple as that I feel like it really is but you guys don't let it be that simple um and I think that's some food for thought um this is maybe not the easiest video to listen to I understand that um but I do see a lot of that with you guys and I hope that that's resonating um I did throw some flowers in the background so hopefully you can appreciate that uh but Two and three of swords. We have the air suit. You know, we're definitely likely to see lots of swords whenever you get a reading, um, being an air sign. And the two, you know, it takes two to tango. So you're naturally attracted to other people and relationships in general. Um, but here, you know, there's a sense of being scared with these cards. There's a sense of doubt and of um, maybe not being strong enough to face what's in front of you. I mean, I have, I hate to say that, but that's kind of like a running theme here. Um, there's that like kind of melancholy feel of the three and there's like that need to just blind themselves or to, um, sit on a decision for a very long time to deliberate. And, um, you know, just think how much time you spend doing this, the further and further these are going to be doing damage. 
So the more and more that you um, contemplate and you give people the opportunity to hurt you more, you know, the more that it's just going to be this. You know, I think this you can kind of work with, but this you're really stuck with. You know, it feels like you're stuck. Maybe that's what you guys run into again and again is that you naturally attract people, but the people that you attract you feel stuck with, you know, and that they don't give you the flexibility to kind of move. So that's something to consider. Maybe find people that, you know, you don't, you can feel fully independent from, but still want to be around. I don't know. Let me know <laughs> what you guys think. Um, I didn't mean for this to be any kind of like mom lesson telling you like it is or a read of some kind, but it went that direction with the cards, and so I'm just kind of following through. Um, you know, obviously you guys are really wise. Um, there's intellect to the air signs and the sword suits, um, you know, and you know, you have a, a knack for attracting people. Like those are things that you know, are very, very sought after, especially in this day and age of like getting more um, technology friendly or dependent, you know, we really are going to rely on our connections with people going forward. And we need to keep a hold of those aspects that ground us in natural humanity. Um, and so, you know, we can take a lesson from the Libras and being able to do that and maybe not being able to scared to approach strangers or, you know, attend a party or something like that. And so um, that's something that you guys do. You have a knack for attracting attention and, you know, wearing the attention pretty well. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, you feel like there's always room to improve. That's the sword's energy. You know, you're trying to push the boundaries and limits of society, but you're also very much staying inside of those restrictions yourself. And um, that's, that's what it really feels like to me is the hardest part is that you're living in both worlds at the same time. Um, you know, you have that dual nature that we see with the air signs and, um, that's certainly not easy on the mind. Um, you guys could get into a lot of like self-defeating mindsets. And so it's important to seek balance, you know, when you feel like you're too much up here and it's only driving you crazy, do something with a different element. Do something out in nature with earth. Go to the beach, connect with water, or take a bath. Um, you know, do something with fire. Fire is creativity. Go to the movies. Um, you know, go to uh, a pottery studio. You know, something of that. Like, go, you know, write. Um, and when you connect with other elements, you can kind of have the opportunity to get out of your own that you're so used to. Um, so when it's not, when it's not healthy for you, you know, um, you can't change identities obviously, but you can, um, work in a different way and see if that allows you to kind of reshape your, your present self when it's just inhibiting you. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's, all I have, I think I've spent the most time on this video, and like I said, you guys aren't the easiest to understand. You're pretty complex, um, just like adulthood is. There's a lot of, like, you know, gray area, we'll say. <laughs> Lots of gray area, um, and maybe that's how you guys see things. It's nothing is really as black and white as you would like it to be. Um, you know, there's a lot of mixture, and so there's a lot of navigating around it. And so let me know what you guys think about this video. And I really mean all this with the purest intent. Um, you know, watch the other videos in the series. If you know your rising or moon is different from Libra, go check out those. And if you're curious about other people close to you, I'd recommend watching theirs too. Um, we've been getting a lot of good surprises in these cards. And like I said, even though this is a sword suit, um, these aren't the first two cards I would think of as Libras, so I'm pretty pretty pleased with these draws. Um, I'd say this is the most concentrated energy for the sign that we've drawn thus far, um, with getting no other elements but your own, and there's a heart there too, but um, yeah, pretty cool. So let me know what you guys think. If you want a 
reading for yourself, um, I do that and you can go at tarotwithtyler.com and book a reading with me. I offer tarot readings, but also astrology um, tools and uh, natal chart readings. So if you haven't explored that for yourself yet, um, please, I encourage you to look into that and uh, let me know. So I look forward to hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the rest of the video.